This show is sponsored by Amplify ETFs, delivering expanded investment opportunities for investors seeking growth, income, and managed risk strategies. To learn more, visit AmplifyETFs.com. This is the Amplify first quarter update with Christian Magoon, CEO of Amplify ETFs. Christian, the suite of ETFs from Amplify had an incredible first quarter. I've had an opportunity to interview some of your portfolio managers, sub advisors, and thought leaders. And I want to get your thoughts on some of the things that they had to say about the first quarter. Let's start with Tim Seymour, the portfolio manager of CNBS, the cannabis ETF. The industry uh, by mid February was peaking around expectations of federal cannabis legalization. Uh, Profitability from leading players in the industry that, that really continues to grow, but uh, was part of the tailwind. And, and then I think as we got from you know those highs in mid February into uh, into March and into the end of the quarter, uh, you know I think the the industry really ran out of gas. What are your thoughts on what he had to say about the cannabis industry in the first quarter? Yeah, so it was a dynamic time for the cannabis industry. Uh, This is an area that changes by the day. We saw legislation uh, be introduced federally. We saw uh, voting happen uh, in states and legislation happen uh, regarding legalization, both for adult use and medical use. There's a lot going on. And we think having an active manager to pilot this market environment in cannabis is very important. Uh, Tim is experienced in that space and his alpha is showing up uh, uh, versus the peer group. Yeah, without a doubt. In active management, it is important. And I had an opportunity to speak with Mike Venuto, the portfolio manager of Block, your blockchain ETF. And here's what he had to say about the importance of active management in a niche market. Yeah, so I think there's a really important part of the active management is avoiding sacks instead of making the touchdowns, right? So when there's a harder environment, it's about figuring out who's a real company and who isn't. We're way more proud of the sacks we've avoided than the touchdowns we've made. I love that line. We are way more proud of the sacks we've avoided than the touchdowns we've made. What's your take, Christian? Yeah, so this is another dynamic space, blockchain and crypto sensitive stocks. And risk management is just as important as upside participation. So having an actively managed product allows the team to assess these companies, their management, uh, their their data, their numbers, so that a company doesn't get in in an index, for example, that just happens to have some of the right numbers, but actually has uh, some of the wrong management or uh, approach to the space. And we think Mike and his team at Toroso have added a lot of value. The proof is in the pudding. If you look at Block, uh, five-star rated fund uh, going back now uh, over three years, uh, there's been uh, a lot of uh, names that Mike has been in and out of in the portfolio and uh, has really been able to manage the risk and the reward uh, for it to be a, a five-star rated fund. So Christian, at Amplify, there are several ETFs that are designed to help when there's a lot of market turmoil. The Amplify ETF's Black Swan ETF, symbol SWAN, managed by Dan Kupkovic and his team, are designed just to do that. So I want to play a clip of him talking about their process. Uh, Essentially, in a nutshell, Swan has 90% of the portfolio in very safe fixed income, being U.S. Treasury bonds, uh, with a laddered approach and a target duration of the 10-year Treasury. Uh, And then 10% of the portfolio is designed to be in risk on call options, uh, being leap call options, so they're long-term call options, on the S&P 500 uh, index. So Christian, as you look at the first quarter of last year and then the first quarter of this year, 2021, what are your thoughts? Well, I think the beauty of the Black Swan ETF is that It always has its hedged uh, position on, and it also always has its exposure to the S&P 500, so that no matter what the market conditions are, uh, Swan has one bucket working. Uh, So last year in the first quarter where we saw this COVID black swan decline, you know, 30%, one of the quickest uh, 30% declines ever for the S&P 500, Swan didn't have to wait for a trigger or a moving average to take place to implement its defensive uh, position. Uh, That position was always there and allowed the fund to uh, outperform the S&P dramatically as the S&P was down 30%. 
Fast forward to the recovery and even into 2021, Swan has that always on exposure to the S&P 500, the elite options. And the beauty of that is not, as, not only is it always on, but it doesn't have any upside cap. So you can see uh, that, that uh, portion of the portfolio participate uncapped as the S&P rolls. And we certainly have seen that in years like 2019, where the S&P was up uh, 30% or more. And we saw Swan have an over 20% return that year. Not bad for a, a black Swan ETF that hopefully is going to be there for you uh, during large market declines or black Swan events. So this is a unique product that we think is a great addition to core equity exposure, no matter what market con conditions are going to be. Excellent. You should see a link above me on the screen if you'd like to watch the full interview with Dan. He also talks about their new international product, ISWN, and the way that they apply the same type process to the international markets. So Christian, as we now have the first quarter in the rear view mirror, and we look forward to the rest of the year. I would like to share with you what Kevin Simpson, the portfolio manager of the Devo ETF had to say in terms of what he sees going forward. Well, we continue to be really optimistic on the American consumer, the trade of, I mean, I'll just speak for me personally, the thought process of going to a movie theater, going to a crowded restaurant, getting on a subway, going to a baseball game. I mean, all of these things are going to fuel the economy. If the American consumer puts this economy on its shoulders and, and spends like I think it will, it's going to be tremendous what we see in terms of the stock market. What are your thoughts on Kevin's outlook for the rest of the year? Well, I think he's spot on. You know, Kevin Simpson, I think, has a ton of experience and knowledge about kind of the U.S. equity markets and how they function. And he realizes that the U.S. consumer really powers about 70 percent of GDP. And we're about to reopen in a major way. Many of the consumer data points, whether that's usage of credit being fairly low, saving rates uh, being fairly high, uh, points to the consumer being in a great spot here as we re reopen. So we think it could be very positive for the U.S. equity markets and certainly for many of the blue chip companies that uh, the Devo ETF managed by Kevin Simpson and the CWP team um, uh, hold. So we're excited uh, for the rest of the year. We think that hopefully we're putting some of this uh, COVID distraction behind this, uh, which ultimately will show up increased GDP. Uh, whether or not it equals some of the boom times we've seen after uh, instances like World War II remains to be seen, but early data points to uh, a nice boom coming forward for consumer spending. And I think uh, the stock market is uh, going to be enjoying that, especially many of these consumer powered companies. Excellent. Viewers, if you'd like to see the full interviews with any of these subject matter experts, the links are in the show notes. To learn more about Amplify ETFs, visit AmplifyETFs.com. And if you're on Twitter, please be sure to follow at Amplify ETFs. That's at Amplify ETFs. Christian, thanks for coming on. Jay, great being on. See you soon again.